everybody's quiet now. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem, let me know when you're ready to call to order. I'll get it uh, recording as well. Thank you, Jody. I think we're waiting for one other council member. Um, I believe council member Brunicki won't be able to join us this evening. Jody, I'm just doing a quick check. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. I have a different a different headset on because I don't have enough ports in my computer to run my other one right now. Jeffrey, I see you're here tonight as well. Thanks for joining us. Um, you'll be our uh, on our, our second agenda item. Well, Council, it looks like we're all here this evening. Uh, Jody, uh, you're recording as well. Yes. That would be a yes, thanks. <laughs> Showed up large on my screen. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Remington, a city council member and mayor pro tem with the city of Duval. Uh, you're joining us for the Duval City Council Committee of the Whole. It's Tuesday, June 1st, 2021. The time is now 5.31 p.m. Uh, I will officially call us to order. And the first item is uh, good of the order. Uh, council, do you have anything to uh, uh, share with council? Council member Lengel? I couldn't tell if you were adjusting your screen or holding your hand up. Uh, anyone else that would like to share any share anything? Council Member Naplin. I was just adjusting, ready to adjust my fan. This is just something fun to share, but um, I ended up going with my family twice to play disc golf over the holiday. And we went to the Carnation, of course, and um, the new one in South Fork Landing in North Bend. And I invited whatever council members would want to come to go this Wednesday to Jewel Park in Redmond. And I just wanted to let everyone know if there was more interest. Um, I just started thinking it might be kind of a fun, um, just team building event. It's outside, fresh air. Um, so if, if more people wanted to do it, I don't know about what the rules are on noticing, but I just wanted to put it out there. I sent an email too, but I, I thought I'd mention it during the meeting as well. Great. Thank my, you. If you can get yeah, notice. What was oh, that? Go, go, ahead. go ahead. Sorry, I just said if you get more than three, you would have to notice or just tell the fourth person, sorry, not this time. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of uh, what I was planning, so just wanted to confirm. Jody, isn't it uh, possible we all agree not to talk uh, city business? We could do more than three? You could, but it gets a little bit in that gray area that I should probably notice anyway, just in case. Okay, okay. So, uh, Jennifer, this is tomorrow, is that right? It is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, I... I Normally I would have gone because it sounds really fun and I like Frisbee, uh, but uh, uh, but I'm, I'm not available tomorrow, but thanks. Thank you for that, Jennifer. Uh, any other council or staff have anything for the good of the order? Not seeing any, we'll move on to our uh, first item, National League of Cities. It's a approximately 30 minute presentation and we have uh, set aside 10 minutes for discussion. Uh, this is, uh, really a, a little bit of a kickoff meeting for us. Uh, National League of Cities have been around for many years supporting cities, but uh, the city of Duval recently uh, joined the National League of Cities. And so I'm pleased to introduce uh, Kirk Ross. He's a NLC member and he's also the engagement manager. So Kirk, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you to the city of Duval for becoming the newest member of the National League of Cities. Uh, 
like it was mentioned, I am Kirk Ross. I'm your, your membership engagement manager for the Western States. So that means that I have the privilege and honor to work with all the cities from the land of enchantment all the way to the last frontier. And also the only city in the Aloha State, which is Honolulu. Little fun fact there. Um, so thank you so much for joining NLC. I have a presentation that I'm going to go through and just as more of just kind of a guide in our conversation today, if anybody has any questions, please stop me and ask them as I go along and we'll be able to, to really use this as a conversation starter to spark your interest because at the end of the day, my job is to make sure that the city of Duval's, um, Duval's investment in membership pays dividends. It's a return on investment just like any other um, any other business investment. So the National League of Cities, of course, is the voice for all cities in Washington, D.C. We've been around, it will be in 24. We will have been around for 100 years. We were actually founded by the state leagues. So all of the state leagues came together almost 100 years ago in Kansas City and said, we need a, a federal voice to speak on behalf of all cities towns and villages across America. And so NLC was formed and we still to this day are a member led organization. We have the state leagues that sit on our board and also direct member cities. So the city of Duval is a direct member city, which entitles you to run for leadership positions, sit on the board, sit on different councils and committees, et cetera. Um, our mission, of course, is to strengthen local leadership, influence federal policy, and drive innovative solutions. So though that three-pronged approach is, you'll see that theme reoccur through, um, through today's presentation. So uh, what we work to do is be, of course, that member-driven organization to unify, um, inclusive, focused, valuable, um, visible, and relationship driven organization. So essentially in that mantra, what we are is that we need to have a relationship. I want everyone here to think of me just like Jody. I am your city hall staff, but I just work in DC. So you call me, you email me, you let me know how I can help you be the best and most effective local elected official to be able to serve the residents of Duval. So primarily where we start with this is our federal advocacy committees. So there are seven different federal advocacy committees in which you, your policy passions will guide you to find uh, membership on any of these councils. I will send Jody a link after this to give you the actual paperwork. All you have to do is sign up and uh, leadership will approve because there's some guidelines there. You can only be on three council committees and um, groups. So just not to have a saturation of everybody, one person on every single committee. Um, they range from transportation and infrastructure all the way to community development, um, economic, economic development and community development, public safety, finance, human development, energy environment and natural resources. So it really runs the gambit just like your responsibilities as a council member or mayor, it has no boundaries. City government does it all on the front lines. Um, so here's a little bit, I will send these around, um, the more explanation about each one of these councils and each one of the slides will have a link um, to that descriptor page to learn more and learn about the makeup of the committees and the leadership of each. Um, then we have our member councils. So these are advocacy groups within NLC that ensure that the special priorities of certain classifications of cities are heard by NLC board. So they are first year suburbs, which is just a collection of suburbs um, all across the United States. There are large cities, which of course, um, and this one has a threshold population of 500,000 or above. So the, this is the Seattle's 
of NLC, New York City, LA, Phoenix, Dallas, Miami, um, military communities. So this one acts as a hybrid between constituency groups and councils. That's terms real inside, but it really functions as a place for cities that have a military presence in their city, like a base or a VA hospital, or have a lot of um, municipal to armed forces cooperations within their municipal work. And also it is a, it is a home for our veteran members um, of the armed forces so that they could come because all cities are military communities. Veterans live in all of our cities. And it's this particular group has certain needs like homelessness um, and mental health services that cities all across America work to address. University communities, of course, if there's a college or university in your town and working on that relationship between municipality and higher ed. Then small cities, um, this is probably where I would find the city of Duval. It advocates for those cities that find themselves um, really under the population of 200,000 and they function really independently on the larger landscape. Um, I've, from what I could see, it looks like Redmond is the closest other municipality to Duval, um, and it's quite quite a distance. So I would say that that you would probably find um, the most benefit in the small cities group um, as they work to address the issues of small cities. And once again, just some more information about each one of those. Oh, and then our constituency groups. So for all of the ladies on council, all the council women, there is a sisterhood of women in municipal government that helps to encourage women to seek public office and leadership and also works on particular issues for that are that are for women um, like uh, violence against women issues and working to address those. Um, and we have other caucuses within NLC, Black local elected officials, Asian, Asian Pacific Islander, uh, LGBTQ+, and Hispanic local elected officials. Um, then we also have the real department. This is our race, equity, and leadership department within NLC. And it really came out of um, the racial tensions that came out of Ferguson, Missouri. Ferguson, Missouri is a member of NLC and called us and said, what do we do? We are, our municipal government is on the front lines of this community issue and we need help to address it and then also to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And so um, real department was created and they provide training and capacity building in the issues of racial equity for municipal officials, uh, technical assistance, and then they also have their own council that acts as a network to help support the work of racial equity. Um, these are a number of the cities that they have contracted with and or state leagues that to come and do um, trainings in their cities. Then we have our savings and solutions. So the, these are our partnerships with the for-profit sector um, in which we have different, we have different programs and benefits brought by each company. So the one that most want to hear about is grant access. So you have one profile in grant access as a member of NLC. So any, any uh, local elected official or, or city staffer can be assigned that profile and then gives them a database of over 10,000 federal, state, and private foundation corporate grant opportunities. This is the largest database for grants out there. And it is a very easy tool. Before I came to work for NLC, I worked for a small nonprofit in Arkansas, and I actually used their 
this tool in my daily work. And so I can speak to the value that it that it brings to be able to 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 really be a clearinghouse for all the grant opportunities a municipality has at its fingertips. Um, we have the NLC Financial Authority. The prescription discount program is another one that a lot of cities like to hear about. This is actually for your residents. So CVS works with your city uh, to, pr to print um, city branded prescription discount cards in which then cities can give out at, at festivals, at city hall, et cetera. And it, and it provides discounts to residents on their prescription drugs. And this is accepted. CVS tells us that it's accepted almost everywhere, including the majority of private, um, you know, mom and pop prescription drug pharmacies across America. Then there's NLC Mutual. Um, they're housed within NLC and I can get you in touch with them. Uh, I'm not the expert on that one. There's SC Health. Um, we brought them on last year during the pandemic. They offer a steep discount for all of the PPE that cities were needing back then. Um, the Community Showcase video program. So this one is by CGI. They actually work with a city to produce your intro video. Um, everyone knows that internet presence, even if you are a municipal government, is paramount in today's digital world. And more often than not, your 30 second video in which, you know, prospective residents when moving to an area, take a look at to kind of get a feel of what the community is like. They actually work with the businesses located in the city um, to garner sponsorships for that video. That's how they end up, they make their money. Um, and then they also typically will showcase those businesses within those videos. So it's a great, it's a great tool um, for all cities. And then there's the service line warranty program. Um, this is the program. I actually have it. I am a customer of HomeServe. So what this does is this is a warranty program, not to be confused with insurance. Insurance and warranties legally are two different things. A warranty is, um, is a product for, for things that are going to break. So this covers your parallel lines to city infrastructure. Most residents do not realize that their legal and financial obligations start at the meter. So there are, you know, sometimes 10 to 30, sometimes 60 feet of infrastructure that the resident is legally liable for. And when that ruptures, that is a huge cost to the resident. This program is $10 a month. Um, that's less than Netflix. And I can tell you, I have tons of, of stories about how residents were saved because of this program. Um, and what and there are uh, incentives with HomeServe that they can pay for a city's membership. If you were to sign up in their NLC service line warranty program, um, also there are uh, revenue sharing uh, capabilities as well. And I can get you in touch with your um, with your regional representative on that issue if the city is interested. Um, then, of course, like all good associations, we have conferences and meetings. So our two uh, pillar conferences and meetings are Congressional Cities Conference. This is our legislative conference, our four-day fly-in in which you, we uh, put on programming. We have meetings, and then we also brief local elected officials on the legislative priorities of cities. And then we work to put you in touch with your um, members of Congress. And we do all of that logistic work and finding, getting the meetings, having the sit downs, et cetera. Um, because if anybody's ever been to DC, it's a fast moving city and you gotta know people to get in the door. Um, so, and then we also have City Summit 2021. This will be in Salt Lake City, Utah. And this is our big 
conference of the year in which we have huge keynote speakers and technical assistance uh, cohorts pro, um, produce all of their their findings of the year. This is where our research department showcase their their work that they've been doing for the year. It is this is I believe a seven day conference and it is just an absolute blast and I encourage everybody to come to Salt Lake this year. And then once again, it's been an absolute pleasure going through membership benefits with you. Please get in touch with me and let's work to get you engaged with NLC. Like I said, I will get Jody all the paperwork and we'll, you can sign up for all of those constituency groups, the councils and the committees that you saw here today. And let's just start a relationship. Well, Kirk, thank you for the really helpful presentation. If it's possible for you to send that to uh, our city clerk, Jody Wyckoff, uh, we can have that online for uh, community or other council, one council member that wasn't able to attend this evening. Uh, I'll open it up, uh, Kirk, if that's okay. Uh, any questions from council or city staff? Uh, council member Naplin and then council member Schaefer. Yeah, I just had two quick questions. Uh, the video showcase sounds pretty neat. And I don't know, is that something that the administration would need to reach out to coordinate uh, to get that? Yes, I can put you in touch, um, Michelle. No, it's Nicole now. Nicole is the executive director over there. I can put you in touch with her. Um, they like to schedule those. As you can imagine, they, they work with independent uh, film crews across the nation, and uh, it's just a matter of logistics. And there's no cost at all to our city to do that? It's no cost at all to the city. Um, so how, and everybody says, well, that's too good to be true. There ain't no such thing as a free lunch. How that actually works is they go into your city and they solicit sponsorships from the for-profit, nonprofit communities. Um, nine times out of 10, who I see on there most of the time is local dentists, pharmacies, the real estate um, brokers, you know, people like that, um, that really want to be kind of the bandwagon for new residents moving into your city. And so they also showcase them in the videos and that's how that gets done. I see. And then my next question is, are there any other small cities in the Puget Sound area that might be closer to our size or Redmond is so much bigger? It's not really the same. Just curious. That is very true. Um, let me pull up real quick. I work with Kirkland and Shoreline, but they're not quite y'all size either. Um, Issaquah is a member as well. Um, SeaTac, Federal Way, Auburn, Tacoma, um, Lacey, Washington. How big is Lacey? Forty-two thousand. So, and y'all are looking you up in the database real quick. It's okay. I'm just curious if the if you know to network with some other small cities like us that might be members and find out. And that's. That's the beauty of it is that the small cities council is from all over the United States. So you get to, you would really be able to network with cities outside of the Puget Sound would still have the same kind of issues that Duval does. Um, you know, really talking about attracting talent in the economic development space, talking about affordable housing, um, you know, really working on infrastructure and transportation as, as highways run through your cities um, it might even be the main thoroughfare of the city. And so how do you work on those state municipal relationships to get them to prioritize that, that state highway um, as it's the lifeblood through your community? Um, what else? What else? There's just so many issues that small cities have. And, and that there are two dedicated staff to that council. And so as an active member there, you would be able to offer suggestions for presentations. And then it's I, I chair the first tier suburbs. So when the first tier suburbs tell me, hey, we want to do something about affordable housing. So then it's my job to either work with our um, 
research department and have them come and do presentations. Whereas what's really great is that as a national organization, we have that presence in the DC area in which I can reach out to nonprofits that are working on that, national nonprofits working on those issues and bring them in as guest speakers. And as with Zoom, we have upped our, if our councils now meet monthly. Um, they used to only meet three times a year because that's when we met in person, but now they meet monthly. And so we cover a, a range of topics. Great, thank you. Yes. Council Member Schaefer. Yeah, first, uh, Kurt, thank you very much for the uh, overview. That was very, very useful. Um, could you give maybe an example of one of the, the committees like public, public safety caught my eye. Uh, what, you know, what kind of interaction would that have with other cities? How would that compare, you know, would it be useful? What I'm wondering is, would it be useful for somebody like Duval to even be represented on that? Uh, being a very small city among probably a majority of bigger, bigger cities. Do you have a feeling for that? Well, I would say that it is important for the city of Duval to be able to have its voice heard um, no, matter, no matter what size. So the, the Council for Public Safety covers everything as that you would think public safety traditionally would and then more. So this is um, issues of substance abuse, municipal fire department policy, juvenile court justice, um, disaster preparedness and relief, homeland security, um, border security for those cities that are on our nation's borders, um, corrections, prevention, you know, it, it runs the gambit. So a city like Duval, um, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to think is, is fire issues or wildfire issues a thing, a problem in Duval, that would be where that would come into play. And I will say that NLC, along with two other partners, I'm gonna make a real quick plug. We have developed a tool for cities to be able to gauge their fire risk. Um, and I can get Jody that as well. Uh, we're releasing that on the 8th. That's going to be, that tool is going to be rolled out. Um, and so it allows a city to say, okay, this is my size. This is my geographical area. And it works with data of, of fires in the past and what has happened. Um, and that would be where that, that committee would take that up. Um, it's also, you know, it's a place, like I said, for juvenile court systems, you know, talking about municipal code and enforcement and saying, you know, what, what do we do in our community to have the best outcomes for our residents when it comes to policing? So um, there's lots of conversations happening there um, and being able to figure out how we equitably police our communities for the, the best outcomes for all residents. Yeah, no, no, that's very useful. So it sounds like with those types of diverse uh, topics, um, it would be useful for Duval to be a, be a member of that. So you did, you did answer my question. Thank you. Uh, council staff, were there any other questions, feedback for Kurt? Uh, council member Langle. I just have a quick question. Um, you mentioned working with um, funding sources and other nonprofits. Do you work with intermediaries like LISC and um, NeighborWorks? So um, a number of, I guess, the closest thing that I would think is that we do have our corporate partners and we really think of them as thought partners. Um, these, are, these are companies like Bank of America, uh, Wells Fargo, Lyft, Uber, um, Amazon, the, and they, they, they work in your communities. And if you're talking about, take for instance, Little Rock, Arkansas, uh, former, was the former president of NLC and, um, and Lime Scooters was coming on, on the scene and he was trying to figure out, okay, well, what do I do for my city and how do we make sure that my residents are safe? And then also I'm working with POAs that don't want scooters in their neighborhoods. And so we were able to put those to the city of Little Rock and Lime scooters into uh, room, you know, they could have a conversation together and really be able to figure out how to implement the scooter share program when it was such a new idea in 2007. Does that kind of answer your question with an example? 
Um, yeah, I was just thinking more in terms of uh, partnering and um, since they have a lot of resources on your grant side, I mean, <clears throat> they, and they also are um, heavily connected with both national foundations and, and corporations like Bank of America. Maybe, um, I'm trying to think of how I would frame a-, a Well, maybe I can. So I'm not exactly. as familiar as the, the two examples you gave me, but um, I did, I would be remiss if I didn't say, Grant Access is actually run by Lexapol, is who the, the mother company of that is. And they actually do grant writing services. And as a member of NLC, you do have a significant discount that you can contract with them. And that's one of the reasons why we use them is they have a, a, grant, a grant writing um, approval rating of 65% and the industry average is 35. So they are by far the experts in the field. If that was something that the city of Duval was wanting to look into and not having to have a full-time staff writer on city staff. Uh, well, I guess just to follow up to that is um, with your finance committee, do you work with the CDFI models? You know, the community development financial institutions, it looks like that's gonna be a big funding source in the, this new administration. Yes, yes, they do. So if you're talking about wanting to get in touch with any any of the, the federal departments or anyone in the administration, your FA departments, those councils and committees are staffed by one individual and they are always in touch with their corresponding departments within the administration. So of course, um, you know, the environmental agency is in touch with the EPA. Our um, intergovernmental relationships is in touch with uh, the White House intergovernmental director. So um, we have those existing relationships and that's what you pay those staffers to do is to maintain those relationships. So if you needed to get in touch with anybody in the White House or any of the federal departments or agencies, we could, we could work with you on that. Thank you. Uh, Mike Remington, just have a quick question. You mentioned Lexapol. Uh, I'm used to hearing Lexapol that provides policy for police and fire across the United States. I'm assuming it's a different Lexapol. I'm trying to let's look. I thought maybe they branched out and are doing grants now. I think the Lexapol I was thinking of is based yes. out of California. It's in that presentation. I wanted to pull that up real quick. Or it might not be. Well, Chris, taking a look, are, are there other council members that would like to uh, ask a question or city staff? Not seeing any right now. Yes, it is Lexapol. And I'm trying to see if that's the same Lexapol. It's spelled exactly the same. Yeah. Well, but then I see what you're talking about. When I Googled it real quick, Lexapol yeah. Public Safety Policy yeah, Training they, Solutions. They provide and, uh, nationwide for police and fire. And uh, in fact, our police department uses uh, Lexapol here. Well, well Kirk, thank you. Um, not seeing any other questions. Uh, there's a lot to digest there. I, I'm amazed at how much service is uh, awaiting cities that uh, would like to uh, avail themselves to it. So I think it's going to take us being the newest on the block. You did catch my attention when you mentioned something about Hawaii, and I didn't, don't know if you need one of us to go with you over there, but I'm teasing. But I've been begging really Apamo nice. <laughs> to, do, uh, to do an Asian Pacific Islander meeting over in Honolulu, so I'm right there with you. But yes, that's all this was intended for. I really just wanted to spark some interest. Maybe you could find each every one of you find something to latch on to. If you would like to have a follow-up meeting, a more one-on-one, -on -one, and we can actually sit down and create an engagement plan for you specifically, um, I would be more than happy to do that. Do that all the time, and we can really lay out an engagement plan for you over the next year. But please well, use really my fun. number, use my email, put me to work. I'm here for the city of Duval. Well, thank you, Kurt. You know, I thought one last question. You mentioned the conference. Not all of us are able to attend those conferences. 
Are any of those available online to attend? I know this last year, many um, meetings, conferences, they have opened them up uh, uh, to to folks to do online. Is that even a possibility with the National League of Cities conference? So we were all we were all virtual last year, and hybrid is something that we're investigating at this time. I'm um, actually I sit on both of those committees as a staffer uh, to really represent your interests. So thank you for letting me know, and I will most definitely let let those committees know the interest in hybrid model um, meetings because it is. I think that it's like the genie's out of the bottle. Everybody knows the benefit of being able to do this. Um, so we are hoping to be able to bring that, that level of return on your investment to you and have those virtually available. Well, Kirk, thank you so much for this evening. Uh, you have a good night and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much. And thank you for being a member. Have a great night. Take care. Well, Council, we'll move on to our, our second item, which is our government facilities assessment and master plan for our citizens uh, that may wonder what this topic is. Uh, at uh, During our, our budget discussions, we approved uh, monies to be able to look into our future, uh, evaluate our current facilities and say, you know, how, are those meeting the needs um, of the services we provide for our, our citizens? So with us tonight, uh, we're fortunate to uh, uh, have Jeffrey and Daniel with ARC. Uh, I have down Tom Beckwith, but I don't see Tom with us yet. Yeah, Mike, uh, I was doing the same. I didn't see him either. And I kept uh, trying to find well, out Daniel, where he... when I saw your picture up, I was going to introduce you as James Bond, uh, Daniel <laughs> Craig, uh, 007, because you look so much <laughs> like him. But uh, thank, thank you, you for both being here. Uh, Steve, I don't know if you wanted to... Uh, give an intro to this at all, or if we can just go ahead and launch into our presentation. Yeah, uh, good evening, Council, Mayor. I don't know if you're not here yet. Citizen staff, Steve Onyszewski, Public Works. Sean Tozer, the uh, resident air traffic controller in the bottom corner of my screen, will be <laughs> flying you through this. Um, we do have our, our newest contracted consultants uh, with us tonight to, to just start us off. Uh, you know, they did watch the meetings that we did discuss for you know, for their understanding of what our goals really were, what the changes that we've, we've talked about from advertisement to how we transition to get uh, to where we're going to go. Uh, with that said, Mr. Tozer, uh, a quick word of advice before we let these two go at it. And I know they're going to share their screen and stuff, but go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Mayor and uh, Mayor Pro Tem, City Council, Sean Tozer, Public Works. Uh, so as you guys know, we this is sort of our kickoff. We, I think, executed the contract with ARC on like Thursday, maybe, maybe Wednesday evening. I, I don't remember for sure. So they just are on board, but obviously they've, we've been in discussion with them. They're, they were aware of uh, sort of some of the discussions we've had up to this point and then are here to just really give that sort of overview of the services that we're looking at doing, some of the ways it's kind of, it's customized to what we're asking for or, or maybe some of the changes that have happened with our, our strategies. So we'll uh, we'll recap everything at the end also and just see if there's any other holes or anything that we haven't addressed. But uh, hopefully they can they can uh, get you guys as excited about the project as we were. So uh, I don't know, Daniel and Jeff, just put you on the spot really fast. Do you know if Tom is going to make it in or do you? Uh... I do not believe he is. We've been okay. watching and looking. So we'll Got wing it. We'll oh, wing oh, roger it. that. Okay, very good. Well, I, uh, I turn it to you. Yeah, well, Thank you, everybody, and it's a pleasure to meet you all um, through this medium. Uh, I want to start out by first, again, thanking you for approving our contract. We really appreciate it. Um, we know your concerns. Um, I know, at least I, I believe Jeff might have too, but we watched the council meeting, and uh, you had very good dialogue. And uh, I want to, I guess, second what Mike had said, you all have a a very good heart and focus um, to take care of your citizens. And so I think this is a great step in, in kicking that off. So we're here to have a bit of a pep rally, really, uh, just to make you feel comfortable um, with our process. Uh, that said, I, I just pulled out a few slides of our interview. Um, I'll share that with you here just to sort of uh, kick that off and jump right in with any questions. Um, please feel free, but we want to sort of hit you with a bit of a, an overview um, of 
you you know who we are, but again, this slide in itself, can everybody see that? Good. Yes. Um, lots of experience. And again, we bring Tom Beckwith again, who isn't here, but, um, oh, now that I say that, I was prepared. Um, Tom looks like this. <laughs> um, he, he does, he, he looks grumpy. He is that grumpy. Um, so be prepared uh, for that. Uh, and of course we've all aged. Uh, so uh, just thought you, you'd appreciate that at least. Um, Tom has a lot of experience. Uh, I don't know if you uh, heard his name fly around, but most of this is listing uh, all of his background. Uh, we work with him uh, many in many projects, either he takes the lead or we take the lead or vice versa, right? It just sort of flows that way, depending on what municipality or township or city we're working with. Um, I, I show this in that because of all that experience, um, I also want to uh, remark that we don't do a canned thing for you all. You know, we actually, uh, or we take a lot of pride into looking at your specific city, your specific needs, uh, not only from the proposal, uh, you know, from the get-go, but definitely now that we're under contract. But we don't really have a canned uh, presentation that we um, hit when we go after uh, these feasibility studies. And as you as you can see, we at least know what some of your bu buildings look like. Uh, we haven't been there yet, but trust me, we will be. Um, this was again a slide right out of our presentation. Um, that said, uh, we also have been very clear and listening to Sean and St Steve, uh, as well as you all, in that you know we want we want to be nimble, and that's sort of what we're about. ARC stands for uh, Architects Resource Collaborative, and the capital C is collaboration. Uh, and so we, we will listen to you and we'll hear your concerns and we'll modify accordingly. Um, and in doing so, um, we've already set up the contract back to you to say, look, uh, we saw the original RFP, we based um, our scope and fees and our deliverables on that original RFP that again, by the way, was done really well, very detailed. We don't see that a lot and many of these. So again, congratulations on that. Um, but having said that, the tasks there are, are flexible and we can move them around. And so I've tried to show that in the schedule, which I'll talk about here in a moment to show you how we are going to approach your specific project. Um, but as a broad overview, um, sort of the metrics that we look at facilities and one of the things we can do really quickly is as a rapid pre-assessment, knowing that you may not want all these buildings uh, to get a full building analysis, we can be efficient with that uh, in being able to save just the architect, me and my structural engineer can come quickly and do a rapid assessment through all these buildings and say, hey folks, guess what? You're right about this one. You're right about that one. Maybe we shouldn't do a full uh, building assessment on that um, and start the whole project out just like that um, with, with that thought in mind. Uh, in doing so, again, we take a, a simple matrix like this and we can walk through and just, uh, this is essentially a facility condition index that is a standard where we pro provide a number which relates to a percentage, which essentially goes from good to critical. And your good stuff is great. Your critical stuff is your priority immediate needs that you need to fix. In an overall full building assessment, you would have this in detail. Uh, but we can again modify that for a quick assessment on your buildings right away. What, what we really want though, I think, and you guys tell me, you guys tell us, uh, is that if we jumped into the programming side of things, right? If we change up the task order and we roll up our sleeves and, um, and actually do some of the fun stuff first, um, that has to do with figuring out your future programming, programming needs for all of your departments, all of your staff. And there's, that is the workshop that we'll be doing uh, with your steering committee. Uh, 
likely not all of you, but if there's one or two council members that are part of that, uh, it definitely will be that. And it would be anyone who, of course, is a head of a department, um, anyone that needs to be involved with the decision making of where future staff needs are. Sean's already done a lovely, quick little uh, email that he shared with me that put together a matrix of uh, potential staff needs uh, already. So we've got a head start on that. And he was already um, in line where I could say, thanks, man. That's exactly what we'll be doing you know, when the workshops start. Um, but don't go too fast here, man. Just slow down. You know, we, we, we do have to get the contract going first. Um, out of the workshops, of course, it's, it's uh, again, an overview. It's, it's stuff like this. Again, taken right out of our interview, you'll be seeing very detailed um, program documents that will list all your departments. It will list the space needs and the future your, sorry, your full-time employees and your future needs spread over time and space. And it all then, it becomes nailed down to spreadsheets like this. You actually will end up seeing eventually some fun uh, office layouts, things like that when we get that far to sort of describe how the program would fit together with your actual employees. And again, all a broad stroke, right? Think, don't think about a specific building at this point in time. This is going to first start out with the process of your of program needs, just program needs strictly. Then we'll get into the, the actual building, physicality, physical plant space needs, things like that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll dial that down to special area needs. You know, this is again, some examples of city hall chamber needs, any things like that within the city hall. And we will take it as far as to your equipment needs. You know, we're gonna ask you all of the equipment that you need. And we, if, we, if we don't know it, we'll make an assumption of things like that to take up all of these space needs. Ultimately, uh, as we go along this process as well, uh, we're going to you know, ask a lot about systems furnishings and things like that. And uh, as you all are familiar with, you know, do you need all this space anymore, right? Um, you know, we have found out working remotely that there's a lot of um, uh, unnecessary used office space now and we have uh, come across numerous projects since we began this that starts to talk about that flexibility and do you really need that at all? Um, and the, the thing that Tom will uh, dial it down to as well is talking about how much can be teleworking, you know, how much can be uh, sort of nomad hoteling type of space. Can people still work from home and not have to have a physical presence in an office? And then the fun part here, uh, you actually will hear of, or we will update you to show you uh, what we call adjacency needs. This is a fun uh, workshop that we've done on numerous uh, facility programming assessments where it's, it's essentially taking a sticky, a sticky note. You all are familiar with the, the famed sticky notes that we used to put on you know, hardboard and move them around. <coughs> Excuse me, well, we've at least pioneered it, if you will, to make it electronic now where we can actually move these spaces around with a workshop um, uh, scenario and actually you guys tell us what needs to have priority in close proximity to one another and things like that. And then the next level of that is fine tuning it with exact priorities where, you know, this is critical. You know, there's spaces here that are critical that need to be next to one another or that can be pulled far aside. Um, and that, that will be the breadth of, of all the, the, again, conceptual thinking of the program. Again, don't think building here still. This is still just conceptual programming. And then really I pulled the last slide, you know, these were again questions that you folks asked uh, right out of the interview, uh, but what are the key elements of earning um, trust in the process, it's, it's about this. It's about us being able to touch base with you. Uh, 
and of course your authorization of things. It's your staff authorization, it's a steering committee. Are we doing right? Uh, I think Sean and I have set up the contract too to have certain checkpoints uh, with the council uh, and more importantly, uh, checkpoints at phase ends, phase ends or task ends uh, where we can see where we are with scope and fee uh, to move on to the next um, element. Jeff, anything I can you can think of at the moment? I think that's the major one. Yeah, the schedule was, I think, the, the critical part to show that how we kind of move, reorganize the, the task. Yeah, so if you all can see this, uh, hold on here, I will. Make that a little larger. I know that I know Gantt charts are hard for everybody, so we tried to keep it very simple. Um, but the idea here again, if we have tasks um, one through five, um, what I was trying to explain in the overview essentially dials it down to just Duval's needs now, and the fact that we start out with an immersion, we learn from the documents you have all of the facility work you've already uh, done will review the, the prior work that's been uh, put forth for us in use. Uh, and then we actually changed up the task order, really. So instead of dump, jumping right into uh, the facility assessments themselves, uh, we'll jump into program planning. You know, we'll jump in the program planning that sort of parallels with, in this scenario, task three, which is operational work planning. Uh, and it literally are, are the workshops that start us off uh, using, again, referencing the graphics that we showed you earlier and all the programming information. That said, uh, while we start this off, you know, I can do with our structural engineer, this green line item five, I can do the pre-assessment, pre sort of the rapid assessment. And the goal here was is to have that done and complete so that by the time we get to the yellow line, task two, which is the idea of infrastructure assessment, the tours themselves, the full building assessments, we will, we will already have been able to fine tune that and say, okay, we get it. You don't really even need full assessment, assessments on buildings A, B, and C or something like that. So we could remove them from the full scope and not, again, waste time, effort, and fee on that and have that come back to you uh, in the form of, again, savings um, to the entire project budget. Um, then the task four, I would say um, that's really task two. Task four would be a financial analysis. This is what we're under contract to do. You will see uh, the budgeting and the analysis of future assumptions uh, and long-term uh, long assessments. Um, on the entire uh, project. Uh, and then we'll, we'll definitely jump into a planning level design for the future. Uh, and in that we promised at least, um, I think uh, Sean, it was three to five maybe options of, of different just planning options uh, for where you might go uh, in the entire project itself. And as you will see through this, again, we can modify this accordingly but I've tried to build in some council touch points. Uh, and again, you tell us uh, we can fine tune that to whatever level we need to, uh, but again, always coming back to you uh, for an update um, and giving you the progress of where we're going and asking, what are we missing folks? You know, what, what would more would you like to see? So that's really all. Um, I had uh, here graphically, um, we open it up to your questions. Uh, if you can fire away, please do. And we'll try to answer them. Andrew, and Jeffrey, thank you. Uh, we'll go ahead, uh, Council Member McHenry. Thank you for all that. That was really cool to see. I was wondering um, for that rapid pre-assessment, do, have we gathered enough information on our end in terms of the inspections that were completed for you to have what you need to complete that? Or is there additional um, things you need to look at in those buildings for you to complete the uh, rapid assessment? 
I'll let you know, Amy, as soon as I look at them. <laughs> we, yeah, we, I would think at a minimum, at a minimum, we would want to put our own eyes on it. That way we're not relying on uh, secondhand information. That way uh, our insurance carrier would like that a lot better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we appreciate all the background information, but Jeff said it right. You know, it's, it's our responsibility now to make sure we're seeing the same things or maybe something different. So all the information is still helpful uh, to start us off as an immersion. If, uh, Mayor Pro Tim, if, if I may. Yes. Or more questions. Oh, yeah. I just didn't want to derail questions later, but uh, I just wanted to add a couple little bits. So again, Daniel and I have talked quite a bit on the phone, and I think really looking at sort of our, how our discussions with council have gone, I, I think trying to look at the standard or the canned approach for ARC, as he mentioned, you know, they don't really have one. So what we've talked about with Daniel is, is a lot of what their jobs have ended up has been uh, have evolved. So they might've started with a facility that turned into something else, or maybe one assessment that's turned into an entire new city hall. What our discussions have really led to is that they're very nimble and they, they seem to understand that sort of shifting sand. You know, you, you, you only know what you know when you start. And as you find out more information, you need to adapt and you need to change your approach to accommodate that new information. And so I, I have been feeling very comfortable with uh, them understanding and them being appreciative of the fact that, hey, we know that what we find out in a month is going to change how we scope this out three months ago. And, and so the fact that they seem to be very willing to move and take in new information and have those touch points. And again, those stopping spots where when we go into a new task or we're ready to go into a new task, we'll be having that conversation that, hey, is this still reasonable? Do we need to do this? all the way as we had spec'd out or should we pair this back whether that be in types of services or in the number of facilities specifically so i wanted to share that really fast and then i know you guys don't see it i can share my screen but alluding to or or, or talking about what he alluded to with the staff um the staffing table so we th i threw together a spreadsheet that just literally had the number of staff members in anticipated staffing levels and I think once we have that and we get moving again, this, you know, we just got under contract, we're going we're gonna to have some pretty simple math equations to solve, right? So we'll be able to look at there's X amount of uh, staff members. These are their types of uses or departments. And we're going to be able to generate some data just on typical space planning calculations. So we'll have some rather good ideas reasonably quickly as to hey, you know, uh, that's a lot or that's a really big building or you would be served well with adjacencies or the existing buildings are the right size or not the right size. I think we're going to generate some information really fast that'll be compelling and interesting. Uh, but again, we just haven't quite gotten that far yet. We have all the, all the building blocks. It's just we, we, we haven't we, had enough time to take a step. We call it homework, Sean. We're homework, gonna, yeah. We're going to be giving you homework, folks. Yeah, absolutely. So I think we're, we're there. And I know those are things that I think that this council has expressed a lot of interest in. And so I wanted to make sure that we're acknowledging that, you know, we, we are working toward those ends. And I think that we've, we've addressed, even in our private conversations or our, you know, business conversations, I think that we're, we're really trying to hone in on all those different, as, as Daniel mentioned, touch points. So that's my spiel. Please go ahead to questions. I just wanted to interject that. So. Sean, thank you. Um, are there other questions from council or input from staff? Uh, council Member Lingle. Um, yeah, I'm really glad to see that we're going to do more of a, a rapid assessment on the existing buildings. They're, you know, old. Um, I'd be very surprised if there's any earthquake ties and things like that. So what I, I guess one of the things I wanted to confirm is that after you do the rapid assessment, um, will we have a, a basic sense of what we would have to do to those buildings so that um, we have flexibility during a development process? Um, I mean, development just doesn't, I mean, it's not like you pick up all these people when you just stick them somewhere, right? You can't, if you started selling off properties, you wouldn't have an interim use location. So will we, I think it's really um, important to me anyway, that um, we know what uh, more short-term work we have to do to keep the building safe. And yeah. um, things like earthquake ties is an obvious one. No, actually that's a good question, um, Councilman Lingle. That in fact, um, when we're, if you, if you dial it way down into the weeds, 
uh, the structural engineer, for instance, has two different tiers, you know, so there's, well, actually there's more than two. There's, there's, it can go up to four, but a very quick look will be like a tier one level where again, he can even know right away there's earthquake strapping missing or it's there, that type of thing. Right. And you'll be able to have a checklist uh, like that, that again, will give us a good feel for those buildings that are lacking just the basic basic uh, newest need for earthquake seismic, you know, things like that. Um, so yes, in response to your question, you'll see some, um, I would say, uh, what, it may be a shortened version of a report to give you an idea of what buildings uh, are good for what and when, uh, that type of thing. So. Um, Thank you. Other council members, questions or feedback? Uh, council member Naplin. Yeah, I have what I hope are a couple of quick ones. Uh, the first thing is uh, throughout the process, I, I would love to know what the assumptions are going into it. For example, future staffing needs, because, uh, you know, just trying to understand what that is. Um, often things change. And if we're we understand what the assumptions are. If things change, then we know there might be some adjustment needed. Um, and then also, there was one slide where you were talking about, oh, I don't know how you describe it, like peripheral city needs. And one thing that um, I can't remember if it was in the assessment of properties, but parking needs, just for example, you know, our city facilities often could be used daytime for city parking, but then in the evenings and weekends for you know, parking for the community. And, and that's a that's a really important thing, I think, for our community. So I don't know if that's part of your assessment, but the location of the city hall or any of our facilities, that parking is used for more than just employees, which I'm sure you already know, but it just, that slide made me think of it. Yeah, Jeff, do you wanna say something there? Cause I know you've been. Yeah, I, I think it's part of what we'll do is we'll lean a little bit on you for the need. So typically what happens, the the short version is instead of saying, you know, in the year 2050, what are your, your staffing needs? I think the approach that we have is we deal in population size. So if you said, you know, we're at 7,000 people now and, and this department needs X amount of people, and we're going to ask you, you know, if your population was to double or to triple or to whatever milestone you want to meet, you have to sit and think, you know, what would that mean for us in terms of staffing? We found that some departments don't change much at all, and then some increase different than others, and then the needs are different. And then, so that's that's kind of how we deal with staffing long-term projections. And then the parking thing is, yeah, it, there's a minimum requirement for your municipal code, and then there's the actual requirement, which is usually higher for the needs for staff and public and all of that. So it typically ends up being the driver more than the municipal code need. Um, you end up, we always need more parking. So. Thank you. Um, other questions, council? Council member Schaefer. You're muted. We have you on mute. Yeah. There you go. I appreciate it. <laughs> Not really a question, more of a comment. Uh, first of all, thanks for the, actually sending in on our council meetings, getting a better uh, flavor of what the uh, council's you know, concerns and questions were. I think that was very useful. I appreciate very much your flexible approach uh, that, uh, you know, that you just outlined. I think that's gonna be very important to a city of our size that's really never gone through this type of uh, you know, assessment before. And, uh, and then finally, you know, I, uh, you know, I think we're all really excited about this. This is really a stepping stone for us, uh, for the city, you know, for the city uh, into our future. So uh, it's a, it is a big deal for us. And, and we think we're all very excited. You're welcome, Councilman Schaefer. In fact, you just reminded me, I was going to ask, how many have been through this process before, like relative to future programming? Show of hands, good. So at least three of us, right? Three, four of us maybe. Well, the rest of you will have fun. We know we, you will. <laughs> uh, 
Other council members, staff with questions? I have another one. Yes, or, council member Lane. After others. Um, yeah, one of the things ARC is so wonderful at is um, also uh, preparing your presentations in a manner that is very accessible to folks that um, aren't familiar with Im you know, the kind of imaging uh, that conveys ideas and at the same time is not um, overwhelming or kind of scary, things like that, that make people react prematurely. And um, how, how do you uh, envision pre preparing materials so that our staff can use those um, to help bring the community along? And, and I, I know that that's been your, one of your hallmarks in the past, but you've also small and they haven't been through this before. So what, what have you been thinking about on that? I mean, maybe it's too early in a question, but you have done these things so many years. So kind of what are you thinking about that so that we can bring the community along? Yeah. Yeah, well, I will say the as fun as as Beckwith and us think those spreadsheets are, they don't really resonate very well <laughs> uh, with the general public. They don't get people excited. So I will say we're always cognizant. I, I appreciate the, the the compliment that yeah, we we always are thinking about the audience that we're presenting the information to. Um, so I think what's been successful for us in the past is to when we do meet with your team with Sean and and whoever else is going to be involved and we just start showing examples from other things and saying, you know, is this something, do we wanna take it this far and show this information or is that too much too soon? So I think we'll, behind the scenes, we'll kind of internally, the team will decide what's the best way of presenting the information and then just try to showcase as much. And I, I think historically we, the red flags end up being presenting something that looks too finished or too polished too soon. I think that's always been a, a bad a bad move because people just feel left out of the process. So I think the early stuff always ends up being very um, conceptual and open-ended to where um, people feel like their initial ideas are, are heard, but not too far along. It's a fine line, but you just don't want to be too, 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 too much too soon. Yeah, and I would add, Councilman Lingle, that uh, again, I'm I think this is why we're glad that you selected us uh, because we're really, we're architects and we're designers first, right? We're, we're, we understand the design side of it and we're facility assessment folks second, that type of thing. And uh, I think that's the best of the world for you at, at this point in time. Well, thank you. Um, I had a, a little bit I wanted to, to share with you. One is uh, like dot ARC's reputation is just outstanding. And uh, I'll tell you, I, I feel so excited not only to have ARC, but you individually uh, come with a lot of experience. So we're excited to uh, partner with you. Um, well, you know, one of the more important things you probably saw was we're see the need to bring our departments together because we're spread in several different buildings. And yes. I think the comment most of us use is if we were to, you know, design it today, we wouldn't design where we're at, <laughs> you know, yeah, let's move people all over. So we, we realize there's changes. Um, you know, you talked about um, those space needs and I'm getting ahead of this, I'm sure, but I just wanted to mention, you know, we, we do have our police department. And, and so while cubicles work really well in many uh, situations, uh, there's a lot of uh, interviews they have to do. They have to be private supervisors that are conducting employee evaluations or even discipline. So all those things, you know, we understand the need for, you know, some separate offices for those. Um, Flexibility and space, you know, the city's going to change a lot over the years and and being able to uh, use, you know, a added space we have to, uh, you know, right now, I think Steve Lenishevsky has like four different departments, transportation, water, wastewater, parks, <laughs> and eventually some of those may be separated out. I uh, would never seem to have enough storage. Um, we have a lot of special events in town and some of that stuff needs to be stored for the next year. Um, 
there's the nice to haves, whether it's lunchrooms, lockers, um, showers, exercise, public art. I know all those things will be discussed in its time, but we realize it's, it's you know, there, there's a lot of facets to this, but we look forward to diving in at the right time to look at it. Uh, probably most important is public access for our citizens, uh, builders, developers that come in that really have an efficient way to come in and park and a computer that they can use when they got to jump online to look at something and not ask to borrow one of our, our workers' offices. Um, safety is a big thing nowadays. You know, it's just one of those items where it's nice to have employee secured parking uh, where they're protected, card readers. So there's a lot of modernization that has to take place with us. And finally, I'll just mention our, our citizens hound us a lot in a very good way, reminding us that they moved out here because they like the small town feel. So we're not looking at designing a barn or something to work out of. But it really is important that when we have, we want all these modern amenities, but recognize from the architectural sense that we want it to fit into the city of Duval. And, uh, and so this has uh, a, a lot of technical, practical parts to it, but also has a lot of heart for the town. And I, I foresee citizens being able to say this is, you know, so important to our community, a place where they can hold meetings as well, where they feel welcomed. So a big balance for us um, and uh, look forward to working with you on all these different pieces to uh, see what we can come up with. Understandable. And thanks, Mike. Right. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Like I say, we're excited. Uh, before uh, we close it out, I just want to check one more time. Sometimes people come up with a question or comments they want to make. Anything from council or staff? Well, Daniel, Jeffrey, I don't see any. Great job. Uh, thank you for taking this on for us, uh, for listening to our council meetings. Uh, Probably uh, like Tom, we're pretty straightforward sometimes. Uh, maybe too blunt, but uh, no, we're we, very protective of the money, but we also understand it's a big undertaking. Hey, we appreciate your heart and soul, just like you said. And we, we also appreciate the bluntness. So keep it up, <laughs> keep up the good work. Okay. Well, thank you for thank working you. with us. I, uh, I know that you'll enjoy working with, uh, with Sean and uh, with Steve as well. Um, I, I know one of the more important parts here is just sitting down with our staff, and I can't tell you how proud I am. Most of the best ideas I've ever had in my career, uh, 42 years with City of Bellevue, was people doing the job, coming out saying, here's what we need. And usually that's exactly what they needed. So I, I look forward to you getting to meet them individually and having those tabletop discussions about uh, what the future looks like. Thank you, sir. We're looking forward to it, too. Let's go. All right. Well, you have a good night. Take care. Same to you. Be safe, everyone. Right. Thank you. Well, Council, we have 15 minutes left. Uh, with that, I think everybody would appreciate taking a little break before we get to City Council. Uh, I do understand that uh, Mayor Okerlander may be a, a little late, so I'll start our meeting off if she's not there. And we will see you at seven o'clock at city council meeting. We are formally adjourned. Thank you. Oh, Steve, I'm sorry, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> My eyes didn't quite catch it. I see a hand up, Steve, go ahead. Hey, I know we chatted earlier. Are we gonna cover uh, the contract stuff at council with Daniel or would you? Would yeah, it yes, we will. Uh, so uh, what Steve's mentioning uh, are, Finance Administration meeting uh, committee had been working last week uh, quite diligently to try to come up with a recommendation for all the council. Uh, we've have been striving pretty hard to figure out uh, what to do with these on-call contracts. And uh, I've asked Daniel to attend um, the meeting tonight and during the um, Finance Administration portion. Uh, he will jump in to talk about what uh, we as a group had uh, are looking forward to bringing to you at our last council meeting of the month for approval. So we can extend our contracts, keep our, our city business moving forward and uh, meet some of our desires on council to have a, a little stronger outreach uh, for our contracts. So with that, uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, no, thank you. Our uh, committee of the whole is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>